I think the the most important thing to be sort of aware of is not to make any assumptions, not to just assume that something is a cold or COVID and you should just go home and self-isolate without checking it beforehand. I think that's the the key learning I have from my experience meningitis, that I had this urge that I just wanted to go home, go to bed and sleep it off. And if I had got home that evening um, when, I, when I first came down with meningitis, I could well not be here today. It could have much, much more serious consequences for me. Um, and I think that's the... That is really the key message that you should let people know where you are, how you are, how you're feeling, what your sort of symptoms are, because that can make a massive difference even just doing that. And I think if if you start to feel particularly unwell um, and start to feel even something you may not have even felt before, calling 111 or your GP is a first port of call to get someone to speak to someone with some, with some training and can, and can help you that way is key. And then obviously 999 as a, as a next resort if you're feeling really, really particularly unwell, I think the one thing I had when I was when I suffered was that I thought I was being inconvenienced if I bothered anyone. I didn't want to call an ambulance because it'd be a, I'm causing a drama for no reason or something like that, which is just not the case. I think those services are there to help you, and that's that's the real point. I think it's always best to double check things. And I think that, that yeah, that's my my key message. Yes, of course, always jump at the opportunity to talk about Ryan. He was such an amazing young man. Um, he just just turned sixteen. Um, and super fit had, had had been to the gym um he was a sports scholar at his school um and and just the most wonderful person to be around so for meningitis to a for him to even contract it never mind lose his life to it in such a short time was so far off our radar is um, unbelievable and obviously the impact on us as a family with his amazing sister charlotte has has been um well it's 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 hard to actually put it into words how how our life has changed um after losing ryan but one thing we have been passionate about is uh, ryan ryan was certainly too young um to die he, he his life was definitely too great to to stop there so we want to extend his life i guess with with his next chapter as we call it, to make people more aware that meningitis can affect young adults. Uh, 15 to 24 year olds are the second at risk age category um, for meningitis. So it's it's really important. Uh, We weren't aware and a lot of people around us were not aware at the time. So that's very much been a focus of ours to make people more aware um, of the dangers of meningitis. In particular now, with COVID, um, it's really important to highlight that other contagious diseases still exist. So my message to parents listening would be to um, protect your children as much as possible against meningitis. When you're talking about vaccinations, which is a hugely hot topic, um, at the moment, with the potential of going to university, um, include meningitis vaccines as as part of those discussions, um, and talk through um, talk through the disease so that they are more prepared when they leave home into their exciting next path of their life. Um, we unfortunately never got to do that with Ryan, um, but just to kind of make 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 themselves. Um, aware and prepared about the dangers of meningitis also. Yeah, so as you've heard from both Nick and Michelle's story, meningitis is a terrible and and, and devastating disease. Um, It's actually an infection that causes the inflammation of the membranes that surround and protect the brain and the spinal cord. Um, And it's caused by bacteria that are passed between us. Many of us will have that bacteria residing at the back of our uh, throats and our nose. Um, but sometimes uh, when it uh, breaks the blood-brain barrier and causes disease, um, it can result in death very rapidly. Uh, and among survivors, it can also leave them with life-changing after effects. Um, so, you know, again, also thinking about Michelle and Nick's story, it's so important for people to be aware that meningitis remains a risk, particularly for young adults uh, and, and students going off to university this autumn. So we're encouraging people to make themselves aware of the signs and the symptoms. Um, And common symptoms include uh, drowsiness, fever, a headache and vomiting. 
um, which of course are easy to mistake for other other conditions such as, I don't know, um, the flu or a hangover or even COVID-19 in our current times. Um, there are also the more classic symptoms, uh, a, a dislike of bright lights, a stiff neck um, and a rash that may appear in some but very much not all cases uh, that doesn't disappear under pressure. Uh, and these can all indicate that meningitis and septicemia have appeared. But I suppose a key message would be not to wait for these signs and symptoms to appear, because uh, they may or may not, depending on each case. Uh, but if someone's ill and unwell, uh, deteriorating, and perhaps just particularly unwell, uh, it's really important that people trust their instincts um, and seek urgent medical help, whether that's NHS 111, calling the GP, or even 999 if necessary. Uh, because there's no doubt that um, when meningitis strikes, uh, fast action can save lives. Vaccines are the only way to prevent uh, meningitis. And the good news is, is that for youngsters going off to university this autumn, uh, following this week's good news in terms of A-level results, uh, most of those youngsters should have received uh, a so-called MenACWI vaccination whilst at school uh, in year nine. Uh, this is a vaccination that can help protect against some of the causes of meningitis. Um, and um, because it's a school's programme, about 80% of, 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 of youngsters should have had that vaccine. But of course, that still leaves 20% or as many as half a million youngsters who may be heading off to pastures new uh, this autumn without the protection of that vaccination, which is why it's so important for people, uh, either themselves or if you're a parent of a youngster, to check whether uh, that vaccination um, has occurred. And if not, uh, you can uh, go to your GP uh, and, and request to have that vaccine, that life-saving vaccine. Um, so that's the good news. Uh, but of course, actually, there are other causes of meningitis, uh, other bacteria uh, which can cause equally devastation, equally devastating uh, 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 meningitis. And so our message today really is a double one. Uh, not only do people uh, need to access that MenACWI vaccination, they also need to be aware that um, they may still be vulnerable to meningitis, so they need to be aware of those signs and symptoms and be prepared to act quickly uh, should they suspect that meningitis has struck. My message to parents is to... Um Two, twofold really, to protect and prepare. So protect your children by ensuring, as Thomas just mentioned about the men ACWI, check that they've had that. If they haven't, please book it now. <laughs> Don't wait for them to go because when they go to uni, there's going to be way too many distractions and it's it's not going to be a priority. Um, so, so do that before they go and just make meningitis generally part of the planning process for them leaving in addition to the long, long list of purchases and, and things to do. Just add um, meningitis to that list. There's some great materials avail available on the Meningitis Now website that they can take with them. So you can go on the website they will be sent to you. I know it's paper, you know, very traditional paper form. And there's also a fridge magnet with the symptoms on that can be in their room. Um, and again, just 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 pop that as part of the packing and 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 the planning process and making them more about meningitis, so that they can protect themselves and also look out for their friends as well, which is, um, as Nick has said, is, is really important that other people are aware if, if someone is feeling unwell. Yeah, I think it's it's sort of just reiterating the sort of message I had earlier, just in terms of just if you're feeling unwell or not feeling yourself, not assuming it is a hangover, fresh as flu, or at this point almost COVID and, and taking yourself away and self-isolating, I think it's just so important to to really be conscious of how you're feeling and letting people know how you're feeling and, and knowing to take action if you feel particularly unwell. And if you are, if if you've let people know how you're feeling, then they can take the action for you. If you've become so unwell that you can't do it yourself, I think that's that's so important. Why to communicate that to the people as well. I think aside from that, for me, when I had meningitis, I was not aware of the signs and symptoms. I wasn't aware of what it could be. And I think that's one of the biggest things is making sure you you and your friends are aware of how it can impact you and also what the signs and symptoms are so you can take the action if needed and i think that's that's very that's a very important one i think um the sort of the the final point is i think that it's yeah it's looking out for friends but also 
not be it's, it is a rare disease so make sure you actually have fun while doing that and not being overly anxious about it i think that's the most important thing that's definitely definitely something to do at uni Yes, that's right. So as we've been discussing today, there is a MNACWI vaccination that is available on the NHS and is available for anyone up to the age of 25. So it's critical that anyone eligible for that vaccination does take it up. Uh, but as, as as you allude to there, uh, MEN-B is also a, a, a cause of prevalent meningitis in this age group. And uh, there is a vaccination that's available privately, in other words, through high street chemists and pharmacists. Uh, and we'd encourage anyone listening to this to give serious thought as to whether uh, uh, taking up that vaccine is is right for them. It's important that people uh, make an informed uh, choice in that respect because it could be life saving. Um, and anyone interested in uh, finding out more about that vaccination can do so by looking at our website, which is www.meningitisnow.org, uh, where there are information where there is information about the vaccines available and and how people can uh, access them. <laughs> 